Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let us pray this thing in. We are here again for the 12 steps of wholeness, or the Greek word, huggies, in Jesus Christ, which will give us tilios uh, under Jesus Christ, which means it is complete and it is finished when it comes to your drug addiction, alcoholism, any issues you may have. Amen? It's not just about drugs and alcohol. It's about whatever's hurting the hurting soul. All right? Thank you. So, Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, that you would guide us through your word, that you will allow the speaker to walk on the water of your word, and that he may be edified, building of the body of Jesus Christ in all things, that he put himself aside, that he will not and cannot dwell in the flesh, but dwell in your spirit. I ask you these things so that I may walk in truth in all that I do, whether tactful or not tactful, but as long as it's truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, <clears throat> last time we was here, we covered step one, but all teachers like to recap what they have done, amen? One of the things, this is not an NA, CA, or Alcoholics Anonymous or Drug Anonymous or Gamblers Anonymous program. What I never understood is, if you're so anonymous, why you walk around with those key chains telling everybody you, <laughs> you have a problem or you're an addict and you're in the 12 steps program, okay? The other thing that we covered was we don't count clean time here because the only one that can make you clean is Jesus Christ. You're not clean just because you don't get high. You're not clean just because you don't drink. You're not clean just because you don't fornicate or whatever else because if you don't confess daily, repent daily, and, and ask for forgiveness daily, and forgive others daily in the body of Christ or outside the body of Christ, guess what? You're not clean, all right? You're not clean. And the other thing is that we don't say call yourself an addict. No, don't deny your addiction. Don't deny your issue. But once you come to Jesus Christ, he called you many things, salt of the earth, born again, you know, light of this world, the church. He's called you saints. He called you blessed and victorious. So why would you call yourself something that he never called you once you come to him? So don't, don't fall against that uh, name, claim, and decree thing of the devil that you must acknowledge that you're an addict. No, you should acknowledge that you're saved, blessed, and victorious. Amen? Amen. So that's some of the first things we covered. Again, <clears throat> Don't call yourself an addict. Because the scripture says in Proverbs 23, 7, out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaks, and if so is a man thinketh, so is he. Amen? So is he. And the truth shall set you free. All right? Praise God. Praise God. So last week, I'm getting over a cold. I've been so sick. The devil keeps trying to attack me, but I decided I'm going to come out here and do what thus says the Lord anyway. All right? Whether who's here, not here, don't matter. I'm going to do with us as the Lord. You know? No, I'm not going to allow myself to uh, drop dead. But again, I feel good enough to be here to teach this lesson to hurting souls. Amen? But our first step was in our 12 steps of wholeness, or tilios in Christ, is now I see that I, of myself, am powerless, unable to control, manage, my life by myself. And we covered the scriptures that are written in there, such as you should have read Romans chapter 7, the whole chapter, Romans chapter 8, the whole chapter, then read Romans 7, 18 and 19, focus on them, put them in your spirit, then Romans 3, verse 9 through 10, and then verse 23, and also Psalms 32, verse 3 and 7, covering the first step that we did a couple of weeks ago, which said again, I'm going to say it again. I now see that I, of myself, am powerless, unable to control, manage my life by myself. Well, today we're going to look at step two. Okay? Because I said each time I come, I'm going to do one step at a time. I used to teach four steps in one. But now that I'm here and the door has been opened for me to do this, uh, I want to teach one step at a time. Uh, last time I was here, the camera was stuck on a loop, so I only did one-minute segments. But thank God, I still was able to get it out there. I hope I got the camera settings 
correct that. It'll be one long uh, sermon this time, no more than a half an hour to 45 minutes at that, okay? All right, thank you. But uh, step two today we're going to cover. I now realize that my Creator, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit can restore to wholeness. Let me read that again. In Christ. Let me read that again. I think I missed the word because of my eyes. Here we go. I'm going to say it again. Step two. I now realize that my Creator, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit can restore me to wholeness in Christ. Can restore me to wholeness in Christ. Yes, indeed. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit can sure enough restore you to huggies or wholeness to Christ. Amen? Amen. So we're going to look at Psalms 27. Psalms 27 verses and all these are written on the sheet here. All these are written on the sheet. I might post them on the internet for all the people who follow me in Pakistan, Africa, Philippines, Canada, Mexico, and 43 states throughout uh, the United States, including Germany and, pa and Paris, too. I have a few people there. Well, I've been to uh, most of these places anyway. And also United uh, Kingdom and England as well. The UK, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. And look at how many doors God opened up for me. It's not of my own, it was all him. But in Psalms 27, verses 4 and 5, it says this. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Amen. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secrets of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Oh my God, I like that. He shall set me upon a rock. One of the things I like about Psalms 27 also is, if you really were to study it, this was David teaching his people how to kill giants. Amen? David killed the giant, so he had to teach his soldiers how to kill a giant. And if you read that, he will show you exactly what you need to do. Amen? On how to kill a giant. Amen? I'm not going to go through that teaching. There's a whole other teaching. If you want to see what I mean by that, I have a, a video sermon out there called Killing Giants. So you need to go to my YouTube channel or my Facebook page, We Are Son of the Living God, or the YouTube channel will be uh, Minister Warren Rudd or Evangelist Warren Rudd. And you can find all my videos out there for free. I don't ask for offerings or, 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 or take up uh, uh, blessings like that. But if you want to bless our ministry, fine. But you'll never see me begging because the gospel is free. The gospel is free. Amen? And that's out of 1 Corinthians 9.18. I live by that. When I first came to the Lord, that's what he told me I was called to do. 1 Corinthians 9, 18 and 19 was on me because I asked God, show me what you want me to do. And those are the scriptures he showed me that he wanted me to do. Amen? Okay. Again, we are on step two. And step two says, I now realize that my creator, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit can restore me to wholeness in Christ. Now, let's go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Amen? Mark chapter 10. Looking at verses 26 and 27. And it says, And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? Amen? All right, I want to make sure I'm in the right place here. 27, 26, and 27. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? See, I like to keep things in context a lot. I'm reading from this sheet uh, most of the time. But, uh, and then, and Jesus looking upon them said, with men it is pot, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. See, amen. Again, 26 and 27 out of Mark 10, 26 and 27, 
And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, said, With men it is impossible, but with God, for with God all things are possible. And if you've been through drug addiction, homelessness, mental illness, jail, prison, you know, and you got out, and you know it was nothing that you could do to get you out, so you know it had to be God. And I keep saying God, but my God is Jesus Christ. I want to be clear about that, all right? Jesus brought me out of a lot of things, amen? And I knew it was so, because there was no other way I could have got out of it without him, amen? Okay, let's go to Philippians 2. Philippians 2, and again, we're looking at step two of the 12 steps of wholeness in Jesus Christ. And I can't, I must keep emphasizing that this is not an AA or an NA or the 12 steps program that tells you you need to be anonymous. If you come to Jesus Christ, you should not be anonymous. You should proclaim to the housetops who saved you. Who saved you? Jesus. Because I remember when I first used to go to those programs. I mean, if it's a first step for you, fine. Go through it. Because I did. But once they, once they got to the point of saying, you know, um, <clears throat> accept someone in your life, I did. And I accepted Jesus. So the next time I came to a meeting, I stood up and I said, my name is Warren Redden. and I'm saved. All oh, their mouths opened. Fell open. Why? Why? Brother, you're in denial. No, I'm not. You told me to find a higher power. I found that higher power. Now, your, the, the scriptures in the Bible said the higher power is our government and yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to go down there. You know? But uh, Jesus, Jesus became my God. And when I said that, they were like, you're in denial. No, I'm not. He saved me. He changed me. And he could do the same for you. So when I realized they wanted me to worship a rock, worship a flower, worship a sponsor, worship all that crap, but not worship his word, not worship him. It's funny how you go to these 12-step places, and they always held in Christian churches. And you'll see every religion and type of person that is in there who have been battling addiction. But they're always standing in a circle saying the Our Father prayer. Amen. <laughs> and, you know, and keep coming back and yada yada. I forgot most of them terms because I haven't been there in years. Amen. I just haven't. But anyway, uh, where did I say go? Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Philippians chapter 2. But again, once you come to Jesus Christ, you're no longer that. Don't you ever claim it no more. Amen. And don't claim clean time. And why do I say that again? Because when people ask me how long you've been clean, yesterday. Why? Because I might have thought wrong. I might not have forgiven no one. I might have committed something in my, in my, in my flesh that I shouldn't have done. But I said, God, forgive me. I don't sit on my sins. When I know that it happened, I immediately acknowledge it. Yes, that may take time to learn how to do that. It may take a level of maturity to want to do that. But I got to the place, I want to always be clean in front of my father as much as I possibly can. Why? Because he can see everything you're doing. Confession to God, not some man in a booth. Confession to God is this. He was there and saw what you were doing. He wants to hear you tell yourself, your wretched, nasty self, what you've done in his presence. But he saw what you did. But if you're honest with him, that's why he says be specific about it. He didn't say sugarcoat it, oh, forgive me for my sins today. I don't understand people just say, oh, Father, forgive me for my sins. No, it's a specific sin. When you're doing it like that, you're doing it to impress people around you. No, get in your closet and say, God, I, 